Welcome to the house of the Lord. Why don't you stand and let's lift our voice unto the Lord and give him praise and honor. So good to see you in the house of God tonight. God, we are here to worship you. We are here to glorify you. We are here to lift you up tonight, God. How great you are. How great you are, God. Come on, lift your voice unto the Lord. Lift your praise unto him. Magnify him and bless his holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, you are worthy. You are worthy, O God. There is none like thee. There is none that compares to you, Lord Jesus. How great you are, Lord. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Clap your hands unto him and give him praise. Give him honor. My God, how great you are, Lord. How great you are. How great you are, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing this with us if you would. The heavens are telling, telling the earth how great you are. And we are responding to your love. The oceans are rising, rising at your we are responding, Lord. Yes, we are responding to your love. Let's sing that again here today. The heavens, the heavens are t- telling the earth how great you and falling at your word and we are responding to your love my God how great you are how great you are yes you are How great you are, how great, how great you are. Sing it again to him now, my God. Oh, my God, how great you are, how great, how great you are. Close your eyes, lift your hands to heaven and sing that to him. My God, how great you are, how great you are, sing hallelujah.
God, we praise you. God, we lift you up. We magnify you, God. Hallelujah. My God, how great you are, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you. We lift you up, Jesus. There's no one like you, God. There's no one like you, Jesus. You're such a mighty God, Lord. Come on, close your eyes. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Just magnify him for just a moment here. Lord, there's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you, God. No one like you, Jesus. No one like you, Lord. You are righteous and you are holy. You're magnificent, God. You're worthy of all praise and all adoration. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great. How great is our God. Oh, how great. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see. God in my life. How great, how great is our God. He's a name above Sold him, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. Lord, how great thou art. Lord, how great, how great thou art. My soul, my 
Worship him for another moment in this place. Come on, worship him. Come on, worship him. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God, how great you are, Lord. How great you are, almighty God. There is none like you, Jesus. I worship you. I love you, Lord. I adore you, Jesus. I adore you, O oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Is your God mighty? Is he mighty? All powerful? There's no one like our God. No one like our God. Well, what a mighty God we serve. Well, what a mighty God. We serve. Well, the angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God. Yes, what a mighty God we serve. For the angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. and earth adore him what a mighty God we serve Jesus is that God he's the God I serve oh Jesus you're the God I serve well the angels bow before him heaven and earth adore him what a mighty God one more time I'm gonna sing it now of praise. Would you do that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're a mighty God. Yes, you are. Amen. Amen. Turn to somebody and just tell them how great God is. Tell them God is great. God is great. How great you are, Lord. There's no one like him. Amen. Amen. We serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. And I'm asking you to join us in prayer. I, I want us, before we go to the Lord in prayer for our spoken needs, I, wanna, I want you to take an unspoken need to the Lord in prayer that's uh, uh, relevant to our church and just asking God to work uh, His will in these matters and uh, salvation and uh, restoration. And, uh, and uh, just so you know, none of you know what I'm talking about. So don't think whatever you're thinking, it's not it. It's something completely different. But it's urgent, and God is, God is able to do that. So would you lift your voice and take this unspoken need to the Lord? And I know there's many other unspoken requests. We're going to take them all now, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. 
Lord, it's urgent. It's a need in, in lives, Lord, that just need help. And I ask you, Lord, that you would let this church minister now in prayer. Let us minister, Lord, in our actions, in our love, Lord. In the name of Jesus, people are doing it and don't even realize they're doing it to this need, oh God. But I ask you, Lord, that you, you would now minister as only you can do, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Supply, God. And all the unspoken requests that are represented here tonight and those that are represented online, Lord, that we know are, are joining us that have needs, I pray that you would bless them and strengthen them now, Lord, in the wonderful name of Jesus, in the wonderful name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Urgent need of prayer. Brother Kevin, polling needs our prayer. If you do not know, I imagine most everybody does. He uh, he has COVID and it is it is um, attacked his body with a ravi ravished his body and his lungs and uh, yesterday they lifelined him to Methodist and are doing a procedure there to uh, try to save his life um, and um, I think the report today was a a uh, good report in that we didn't receive any bad news today and uh, some things were on the improvement but that process if god chooses to heal him that way it is a long process they told the family yesterday five weeks longer maybe he's already been in the hospital for a week and a half and, and i know that god i believe that god heals in in a, a, a many ways and one is that he uses man the knowledge that he has allowed him to to uh to obtain to help us in our time of need and God chooses that but I also know that he's a miracle God he's a great God that does miracles and you can testify somebody testify God ever done a miracle where a situation was changed in a heartbeat in an instant I'm praying that way tonight, and I hope that you'll join me. Thank you to the many that have, so many that joined us in our time of fasting. We're going to call you again to times of fasting in this need, and uh, asking God to help, and I know that he is, and that God will give grace. Brother Kevin, Sister Barb is still in need of our prayers. Please pray for her as well. Uh, former evangelist, Sister Rodenbush, uh, she is suffering with a... Uh, with um, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, needs a touch from the Lord. Uh, the Dupree family, another uh, ministry family from uh, Nashville, Indiana, needing strength and encouragement. Praying for Brother Raymond Warren, who is facing a lot of uh, adversity this week in testings and surgery and just needs, needs a touch from the Lord. Another minister. I know you've been praying for us. Thank you so much for your prayers. We have felt them. God has sustained us. And uh, we're glad to be back in the house of the Lord tonight with the people of God. We give God praise for that, for our family. Amen. But for these families that are hurting, the polling family, we're asking God to encourage them. Would you take these needs to the Lord in prayer now? Bind our hearts, our minds together. Now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, God, we pray again for our brothers and our sisters that are in need, God. Hear your people, Lord, as they cry out to you tonight, God. For Brother Kevin, Lord, for Sister Barb, for Sister Rodenbush. Dupree family, Sister Dupree and her family, oh God, for Brother Warren and his family, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh God, you are the healer, Lord, you are the one that does miracles, hallelujah, hallelujah, we lift our voices, God, we lift our hands and worship unto you as we petition our King and our Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So thankful, God, that we can call upon you. I 
pray for Terry and Sandy, Lord, for strength in their lives as they walk this journey with their family, Lord. Encourage and help and strengthen them. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, God, you are the God that heals. You are God, you are God. Pray for Jim and Judy George, would you both are... are uh, are sick, brother Jim's sick, and sister Judy's been in a trial of of, uh, of health issues, and just pray that that God would touch them. Now we call upon you to do this thing, Lord, to heal and do a miracle in their lives, Lord. The power and the authority that's in your name, Jesus, we praise you. Ask you to touch his body tonight, her body tonight, God testimony of your power and your might, Lord, and your ability. Let it be so, we ask, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Grace, it's good to see you and Abby in the house of the Lord. We've been praying for you. We're praying and continue to pray for you and... Uh, Good to have you. you. May be seated. It's good to have you in the house of the Lord. Amen. I know you may have been here since we haven't, and first time to be back in the house of the Lord with brother and sister Meyer. They were gone, and then we were gone. We're glad, but God's hand has been upon them and with them as well. And Amen. We serve a great God, don't we? We serve a great God. Amen. Remind you, Saturday Bible hour at ten o'clock. I hope you're joining us for that time of Bible study. Then Saturday evening is our prayer time at 7. Come by the house of the Lord sometime on Saturday evening. Spend a few minutes in prayer asking God to send revival. Amen. I believe God is doing that. Somebody say yes. I believe he's doing that. And we're looking forward to how God is going to fulfill the plan that he has for us. And then join us Sunday at 11 o'clock in the house of the Lord. Amen. Going to be ministering the word. Lord, I'm ready to preach. I don't know that I feel up to it yet, but I am ready to preach. And uh, thankful for that. Come expecting God to do great things. And then back in uh, November sometime, I asked Brother Seaman to teach Bible study for us. And he was planning to teach in the month of December on a Wednesday night and testings and situations didn't allow that and uh, so when I uh, realized that that I didn't know how long we were going to be out and be able to minister I asked him a little over a week ago if he would minister to us tonight and uh, he's going to come and bring the word of the Lord we are indeed blessed of God to have him and his wife with us still and able to minister to us. We love you, brother. Come deliver the word of the Lord. God bless you. Amen. We love you and we pray for you. We okay now? Yes. Hold on a minute, folks. Don't get up. Don't get worried. We're in good shape. This don't work. I'll get something else. All right. I thought it was already on. Shows you where I'm at. Well, listen, folks. Um, I'm, I'm serious, and I make this statement. 
teaching in the recording room has been confining for me, and that's been good for me. And I uh, first told Pastor that I would want a bar stool or a table. And um, if I don't behave myself according to my standards, then the next time that's what I'll do. I told Sister Seaman, I said, if I look at you and I'm getting too carried away, just shake your head. She said, I'll do more than that. I'll just get up and walk out. <laughs> so if she walks out, you know that I'm not doing like I'm supposed to do. Praise God. Good to see Pastor and the First Lady back in church, my Lord. And I know I've missed being here and they've missed being here. Glad that they're doing better. And I, I want to commend them for all that they've done over the last 10 months to help this church. And uh, this is my first time to preach or teach live on the camera. How I wish we'd have had this back in the 70s and 80s and 90s. And what a blessing it would have been, you know. And, uh, but we didn't. And thank the Lord we have it now. And we can be in our home if we can't be here. We can still hear the word of God and it can be taught to us. And uh, I know there's been times that we had to cancel church. And uh, he was over here preaching to a brick and a ladder. And, and I told him, I said, you think the way he's preaching, that's a church floor there. And uh, appreciate our pastor. Everybody needs a pastor, even brother and sister Seaman. It's okay to say amen. Praise God. I was sitting in a minister's banquet a number of years ago, Brother Smith in Seymour, and we were sitting with Albert and Gail Skaggs, who was my assistant pastor at that time. And there was another uh, minister across the table, and he made some kind of reference about not having or needing a pastor. I thought Brother Skaggs going to come across the table at him. I mean, Brother Albert Skaggs was very pro-pastor. He'd come up for air. He said, my pastor teaches me everybody needs a pastor, even him. And I have people that I confer with, praise God. Amen. And Abby, I prayed for you, darling. I have been where you're at. And I want to encourage you to stay strong in the Lord, stay close to your parents, stay close to the pastor in the church. It will see you through. I lost my dad at a very young age. It's, it's, it's hard. But uh, the Lord does see you through. All right. Jeremiah chapter 17. I am going to use a scripture text that, uh, to my knowledge, I've never used in this church. It was also the scripture text of my first sermon back around sometime the first to the middle of April in 1964. And um, I have brought I do not have the original Bible. I don't know what Bible to use. Probably my mother's, mama's. But I bring a Bible down to the pulpit that was given to me uh, September 1st, 1964, the day before we, I was to leave for Bible college. They get, the, the youth class gave me a Bible and a pacifier. I have the Bible. I don't know what happened to the pacifier. That's why I have my thumb. But uh, I did transfer some notes and uh, we use some of those tonight, and I've incorporated some other thoughts about faith and trust and being blessed. And I uh, hope tonight that this will, will, uh, will bless you and lift you up. I've, I've had to be very careful with this Bible. I used this Bible for three years of Bible school, and the leaves are falling apart. In fact, I put some scotch tape in some areas and taped it up, and I'll, I have it in a safe place. And I'll, I'll put it back after tonight. I put it back there. But I want to read in Jeremiah 17, verses 7 and 8. If you would be so kind to turn in the Word of God there. And I've given a couple of free scriptures to Brother Keith, and I got some more to go with it, which I didn't give him. And if he can get them up there, five not, then I'll read them to you. But this is, this is the scripture that I used. And it says, um, and by the way, I'm going to talk longer tonight than I did in that first sermon. There's two things I'm not going to do tonight as I did in the first sermon. I'm not going to cry all the way through it, and I'm going to talk longer than five minutes. Thank you very much. Blessed is the man, and thank you, Pastor, for allowing me this time tonight and asking me. I'm most glad to help you out. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is, for he shall be as a tree 
planted by the waters, that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when the heat cometh, but her leaves shall be green, and shall be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. And I want to use, as I did that night, some uh, will now be 55 years ago come April, the first word, blessed, blessed. Some people pronounce it two, two different ways. But it means to be made holy or to concentrate, consecrate. Amen. Get my words straightened up. So when we are blessed or we bless someone, we bless them with holiness and likewise to be consecrated. It also further means to be highly favored or to be fortunate. I feel tonight that we're highly favored in the Lord. We're blessed to be in the house of God. We're blessed that God woke us up this morning. Now, I slept in this morning all the way to 10 minutes to 7. And that's very, I'm very serious because I get up anywhere from 1.30 to 4.30 every day. Now, some days I go back to bed. Uh, mainly because that's one of the privileges of being retired. You know, I don't have anything else to do, but I, to, I pray and read my Bible and eat breakfast and drink a cup of coffee and two or three cups of coffee and talk to the semen, and it's time to go back to bed. But I am blessed today. I, I, I thank the Lord every day for my health. My health is not what it was 30 years ago. Many of you remember Brother Bob Rimes that preached back in the 70s year. He told me recently, he said, had I known I was going to live this long, I'd have took better care of myself. And I say ditto to that. But I, I feel tonight that I'm fortunate, that I'm blessed, that I'm highly favored to have the blessings of the Lord. And there's a blessing in trusting the Lord. Now, we all have faith. And there's many things that faith and hope has seen me through. There's just some things I had to trust God and trust myself and trust things that I got totally through everything that I was doing. So some of the things that I uh, talked on that night through my five minutes of crying is that I'm blessed to be happy. Amen. Now, so the and I talked about this week with all the COVID and some of our friends that are sick and what have you, there is um, sometimes not a lot of happiness in this world. But I am happy to be alive in the Lord tonight and happy to be in church. Now, I'll probably migrate back and forth in the fellowship hall and thank, thank the pastor for getting things set up there and that such old, decrepit people can sit back there and enjoy church and, and uh, ostracize ourselves and, and, and wear our mask and social distance. And, uh, and COVID, it's, just, it's, been a bad, it's been a bad year. It, it, uh, it really has. It's been, it's been a hard year. And then I talked on, I'm blessed to wait. Wait on the Lord. Sometimes difficult is very way. Hard. I know that I know you folks know that I'm a very patient person and I don't have any difficulty waiting. So the seaman apologized to me one time. She said, I need to apologize to you. I said, What about? She said, I've been praying about patience for you and I read in the Word of God. Well, I'm not supposed to do that. I said, Okay, then don't do it. Then then I talked about trust and I did talk about hope. Now I want to read something. Uh, tonight, Pastor, that um, you went to Because of the Times last year. They're not having it this year. And he and thank you for making provisions that Sister Seaman and I could view that simultaneously as it's going on. This is a prophetic word that somebody transcribed, and I was able to obtain a copy of that this week off of Facebook. Now, I know there's a lot of bad things on Facebook, and you need to be careful, but there are some good things, and and try to get the good things. I read every Monday morning. I open Facebook at least on Monday morning, except when we weren't supposed to. 
It's okay to laugh, folks. It's a house of God. You don't have to be so stoic tonight, okay? And I, I try to see if, if any of our churches were posted a good report. Bam! Wait. The first thing I saw Monday morning was from Frankfurt, Indiana. They baptized 14 and 4 received the Holy Ghost Sunday. Come on, clap your heart. Rejoice with those that do rejoice. <laughs> Praise God. And I'm believing the Lord for Bethel Apostolic the same. But you went there because the time was a fantastic meeting, and y'all probably all left there thinking you could attack hell with a water pistol. After Bud Jack Cunningham preached, I think it was Friday night. But on Sunday, this was a prophecy that went forth, and this is pre-COVID now, all right? COVID really became, to me, knowledgeable in the middle of March when I sat in a board meeting and we spent hours discussing whether we should have the men's conference. This is from Sister Jennifer Williams, who is the minister of prayer at the Pentecostal of Alexandria. She's an African-American lady, fantastic lady, a great priest. She's been in our district. In fact, I think she's a safe ones conference. But this is what she prophesied. Now, we have the word of God, and you say, well, that was for that moment. I don't necessarily think that. Now, you can be wrong if you want to, okay? That's all right. It's, it's okay. But... The Word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We've sung Amazing Grace thousands of times. So here, here is the Word. Here's what the Lord spoke to her. I have not left you. This is Sunday morning after because the time was over on Friday night and before we knew how bad COVID was going to be. Behold, behold me this day. I am your God. Reach out and touch me. Abide in me. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I have come down to comfort you. Reach out. Touch me while I'm near. Thus saith the Lord. Amen. Then in the same service, Sister Vesta Mangan, who's one of the greatest prayer warriors and teachers on prayer that I've ever heard in my life, she said, I will confirm to you that my presence has visited you this day and all your tomorrows. And will be there before you arrive. Did y'all get that? Before you arrive. Amen. I have all your tomorrows in my hand. And my presence will go with you. You need not worry. You need not doubt. Keep on believing. Keep on thanking me and praising me. I have all your tomorrows in my hand. Amen. I don't know what tomorrow holds. Now, this is my plans for tomorrow. When I get up, I'm going to probably turn the coffee pot on. I'm going to start thanking the Lord for everything that I can. I'm going to pray for my family. I'm going to pray for Pastor Nix and his wife. I'm going to pray for all of you. I'm going to pray for my friends. I'm going to pray for Brother Kevin. I am going to be grateful. I'm going to read the Word of God. Drink some more coffee, maybe go back to bed. But then again, I might not go back to bed. But I tell you what, God has my tomorrow in his hands. We never know from one day to the next what our tomorrows hold. You see, there is a blessing in trusting. If you have your Bibles and you want to turn to uh, Psalms chapter number 20, and um, a very knowledgeable scripture that we quote. I have to be real careful here. These pages don't fall apart. But the psalmist starts in this chapter and he says, The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. Maybe you're in trouble today. I don't know. But the Lord hear thee. Verse 2, send them help from the sanctuary. Verse number 5, the Lord fulfill all thy petitions. But here's the verse I want to get to, verse 7. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we, Bethel, will remember the name of the Lord our God. There's a blessing in trusting. In, <clears throat> pardon me, Psalms 37 and verses 39 and verse number 40. The psalmist write. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. 
and the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust him. Blessed is the man or lady that trusteth in the Lord. Let's go to Psalm 16 and verse number 9. Let's do 8 and 9. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand, my strength, my power, his power. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest. Where? Say it with me. Where? Say it with me. I can't hear you. Thank you. In hope. Amen. Praise God. And so faith and hope, it's our duty to have faith. It's our duty to have hope. It's our duty, <clears throat> pardon me, for us to trust the Lord. Let me read you another tongues and interpretation, which this happened to some very dear friends of ours. Many of you will remember Brother Creel coming and preaching for us in years past. It was my pastor and uh, blessed us. And this was his granddaughter and, and uh, great-grandson that gave the tongues and interpretation in a service just a few days after his son-in-law had passed away. And his son had preached. And this, and this was what was transcribed. I read this. I, I, I had this in my portfolio, and I was looking for something else, and I come across this. This blessed me so much. I, I want to read it, whether it's a part of my message or not. I want to read it. Okay? He said, I have not called you to be all alone. I want to speak to all of you that are listening, sitting in your living rooms. God did not call you to be alone. God did not call this side of the church or this side of the church or us on the platform to be alone. But I bring you to the backside of the desert so I could show you who I am. But just as I was with Moses, I will be with you. Just as I was with Joshua, I will be with you. Just as I was with David, I will be with you. We know and believe he was with all three of those biblical characters and men of God. I have not left you, nor will I forsake you. But I am here. I'm waiting on you to surrender and acknowledge the promises that I have placed upon you before the world ever knew you. Whew. That's powerful, folks. I want to equip you. I want to train you. I want to elevate you. I want to reveal hope of myself, more, pardon me, more of myself to you. Will you come unto me, all of you that are burdened, and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you victory in your turmoil. Mm. I'll read that again. I will give you victory in your turmoil. They say you're supposed to read things three times. I will give you victory in your turmoil. Do you believe that? I believe that, praise God. I will give you deliverance in your addictions. You say, well, and I don't think this is talking about cigarettes and alcohol and drugs and beer. It's talking about some things that we can become addicted in and fear and everyday anxiety. Amen. I will give you power in the face of your giant. Thus saith the word. November 15th, 2020. Amen. Now, be so kind to turn to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 3. Verse 1 says, now faith is. But verse 3, he says, through faith we understand. 
chew on that in a few moments, folks. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. God thought it, God spoke it, it was there. Moved on the face of the waters. I read it today in Genesis, I went through reading, and the Lord said, let there be, and it, and it was. Just what, what he said, it was. What God says, it is going to be. Now, then he gives a couple, the writer of chapter 11, and, and by the way, when I first received the Holy Ghost, I, I, I don't know why I quit, but uh, I would read chapter 11 of Hebrews every day. It was a faith builder to me. So he talks about Abel offering a more accurate sacrifice, and Enoch being translated. Now, to me, verse 5 and 6 are together. There's a conjunction there, the word but. But without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord, please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Brother R. E. Johnson preached in this pulpit back probably 79 or 80 or 78, somewhere, and I forget. But he preached from this scripture, and he preached on God always takes care of his regular customers. And Brother Smith, he told a story. He had he was 17, 18, and just received the Holy Ghost. And he worked for Brother Virgil Reeves, who was a minister in the Oakdale Church and later pastor. And I preached for Brother Virgil. Grew up with all his, his boys. We played ball in the neighborhood and a lot of things. And Brother Virgil ran a grocery store. In fact, it was pre-Walmart, pre-Needlers. It was a grocery store, Brother Charlie. And you could buy anything and everything there. Feed. Hey, and so people come in and they said, uh, I'd like to buy some flour. And now, mind you, Brother Johnson just received the Holy Ghost a few nights before, and there's flour under the counter. And he <clears throat> thought, I can't say we don't have any. So he said, just a moment, everybody called him Brother, everybody in Oakdale called him Brother Virgil. Let me go get Brother Virgil. He come out from behind the meat counter wiping his hands and his old meat cutter thing, whatever you call those aprons, Charlie. And, and uh, he, he said, um, can I help you? He said, yes, sir, Brother Virgil said, I want to buy some flour. Do you have any? Yes, I do. Well, I'd like to buy some. He said, can't sell it to you. Well, Brother Virgil, I've got money. You, he said, no. He said, uh, can't do it. Well, can I ask why? He said, because it's reserved for my regular customers. God reserves for the regular customers who diligently come to him every day. Praise God. Amen. 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 That diligently. Now, look at this. I shared this with the pastor. I'm not going to. I can tell you, I've combined a lot of sermons and lessons tonight into this. But I preached one time in, in Brownstown and and it was just one of those off-the-cuff inspirational sermons. I don't have any notes. I don't, I don't know everything I said, but I know one of the illustrations I used. But I preached on damaged faith. How many has ever broke something? Something important. And they may not be able to get it back together. Anybody ever had a wreck? Hello? You can look at the front end of our Avalon if you look at it from the right angle, and you can tell it's been wrecked because... The paint is not faded near as much as the back part. We had an accident with it. Now, it tore up the beauty of that car, but a wrecked automobile can be fixed and to made to look good again. Amen? I know many of you remember that old burgundy Oldsmobile I had. We had a couple of fender benders in it. I took it to a guy and I mean, he fixed it up, and boy, it was polished so good. And we were sitting in a restaurant, and I heard some men talk. I said, man, look at that car right there. What thing looks like brand? Looks like it just come off the lot. And I'm thinking, what you guys just didn't know? I just left the body shop with that. Amen. So our faith may be damaged, but it can be repaired. It doesn't have to stay where it's at. Praise God. 
Now, we sang the song, faith, faith, faith. You don't need a whole lot. Just use what you have. Use what faith you have. Stand on what faith you have. I know we haven't been able to have church like we normally have church. And pastors took out a couple of pews where we can gather in the altar. Uh, to me, it just gave us more shouting room. Now, if we grow, we'll put them, I guess he'll put them back in. He may not. He just may pack us in here like sardines, whatever. Take another one out. That's right. Need, need a little more. We're a little more shouting. We'll take them all out. We just stand. Thank Brother Bill. I, I went. Don't, I hope anybody doesn't take offense to what I'm saying. But I, I went to midnight Christmas Eve mass with my buddy Johnny. And when we got there, the only place for us to sit was down the second row. Well, I was just in awe of everything going on, you know. And uh, they'd stand and sit up. And so I, after church, I told them, uh, we all went. I'm not going to tell you where we went. It's none of your business. But we didn't go to church. I promise you that. And I said, you know, I said, if y'all owe any money on that church, i tell you how you can get it paid off. How's that? I said, Sell those pews. I said, y'all stand up more than the Pentecostal church where I go. And they laughed. It was, it was, it was, it was just, it was just a, a joke. I read this this week, and I wrote it down in my notes. If the cistern is broken, no problem. We have the fountain. If your cistern is broken, if your faith is damaged, Take faith. You have the fountain. And I've got six, seven, eight minutes, and I've got a long ways to go, and I'm not, not going to get where I was at. In the beginning, God, if you, when you read that from, from Genesis 1 and 1 all the way to Revelation 22, 21, that the grace of our Lord be with you, it is a walk of faith. We're reading the Bible through. And maybe you're following right along with the chart. Maybe you have your own set up where you jump around and read this and read that. But you're going you're gonna to get it done. You're going to read it through. And, you know, it's, it's, it seems like I'm faithful. Amazing. I, I never saw that before. I mean, scriptures that I've read, I've read the Bible through numerous times and studied various subjects. And I never, I never seen that before. But it, it's there and and we're gonna and I, I would mark it and and then go back. I'm gonna go back and read that. But you see, all existence comes from the Almighty. Probably Sister Sandy and Brother Larry and Sister Shirley may be the only ones here that remember the gentleman I'm fixing to refer to. When I became pastor in '72, there was an old house here on the corner. A man lived there, his name was Orville Hersley. And Brother Terry and Sister Sandy and me and Sister Sandy, we kept fuse boxes because he only had one fuse wire come in that house. And invariably every Christmas, they'd put a Christmas tree up and he raised a little girl. Was her name Peggy? Connie, Connie. And here she'd come knocking on the door. Brother Seaman, y'all got her fuse, you know, all of that. And we'd try to get over to come to church. And he said, if you tell me where God comes from, I'll come. Well, Orville never came. I preached Orville's funeral. I preached his mother's funeral, Rose Duntley, who lived to be 102. Rose didn't get to come to church very much in her latter years because of her age and health. But, you know, I tried to tell her, well, we have to just believe that God is. I believe in a supreme being. I worship a supreme being tonight. You know, people talk about the man above, you know. My neighbor walked over one day, and they were having some marital problems, and she talked to me and said to see me, and she said, could you kindly... Talk above for talk to the man up there. I want to say, yeah, I talk to him every day. I try to, praise God. You need, you need to talk to him too. But you see, everything comes from God. I couldn't get Orville to understand that. But we walk by faith and not by sight. Now, this is for another day, another time. But uh, how many understands zero? Do I need to explain it to you? Zero. Is zero. Out of nothing comes nothing. Zero times zero is what? Zero minus zero is you can't take nothing from zero. You can't add anything to zero. You can't divide zero. You can't multiply zero. But 
if you put just one crooked number, one, in front of a zero, zero becomes a value. One zero is ten, two zeros is a hundred, three zeros is a thousand, four zeros is ten thousand, on and so forth. And so if you give me a one, I'll take all the zeros you give me. If it's on a check, or whatever, praise God. You see, but God said, let there be, and it was so. Now, many of you are pre this auditorium. But this auditorium came about, we had a board meeting, we had a guy draw us some plans, there was a vacant lot here. We, we used to play softball every Saturday out here. And we call it the cornfield game because there was a cornfield over there. If you knock the old fence, it's a home run. Cornfield game. We didn't, we didn't call it softball. We knocked some of the windows out in the annex building over in that and replaced them. And so we sat down and the board decided, we just, we can't, we can't do this. We're not going to do it. And so we was talking about what to do. And Brother Meyer says, I got an idea. I said, okay. And so he talks, talk about this idea. And I said, I couldn't get it. I said, Give me something abstract. So he took, he said, give me that ledger pad. And he drew the old church, and he drew this building. And I took that to an architect. And he drew up all this from a sketch on a ledger pad. This building was framed, put together. Then Brother Polding come along, and they tore the parsonage down and built the fellowship hall. And Brother Smith's come along, helped us pay for all this, and now we're going to fill it up. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. These empty spots represent people that's going to come to God and find the Lord. Because God takes care of his regular customers. He's, gonna, he's going to take care of us. He is going to lift us, and he's going to carry us through. Let me get to one last quick point, can I? Praise God. I may have to go over a couple of minutes. Pastor, forgive me. Uh, please don't hold it against me. and Please ask me again, even though I go over time. Thank you. It's nothing like asking for a chance to preach. <laughs> but, you know, in Psalms 23, in verse 4, we use that scripture a lot at funerals, and it's okay, it's good. But after today, I'm not sure, Pastor, that David was talking about death. There is a place in Israel called the valley of death. It's a very narrow passage. No doubt David took the sheep through there and uh, on to some pasture someplace. It's where crooks and robbers hid out. And David was saying, yea, though I walk through Brother Wes, I know you like to camp, and, and when we, well, Bill, when we go deer hunting, I went to camp. I didn't go to come home and sleep. I went out there to sleep. I stayed out there two or three days. I still do. I can't hunt, but I, but I enjoy the camaraderie. Amen. But, yea, though I walk through, he didn't say anything about camping. He didn't say anything about building a fire. He said to walk through there. It gets narrow. It gets dark. David said, I've got a rod and I've got a staff. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You shall take me through. You shall see me through that. Now, chew on that for a little while, okay? Now, the Arabs have an old proverb that says, All sunshine and no rain makes a desert. If you never have afflictions, then you're going to get all dried up and be a prune. And no depth and no maturity. Life is a mixture, pain, victory, death, successful, failure, mountaintops, valleys. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You may be thinking you're going in the deepest, darkest trial valley of your life, but let me tell you who is there and to become your rod and your staff. 
the Bible speaks of tough times. I will not time to take time to get on into that. But, you know, we talk about valleys not being well thought of and, and despair and asking the Lord to help us. But David said, yeah, I walk through the valley, the rod and staff. They make me feel that however long and dreary the way through the dark veil, I shall have guidance and protection. Let me close with this statement. In order to get what you have never had before, you have to do what you've never done before. Become an intercessor for your family. Become an intercessor for souls. Praying, praying daily. I'm sure you've I'm sure you have that list. But let me tell you this little story, and then I'm going to sit down. Several years ago, before I came back to pastor you folks, I was traveling the district, uh, doing full-time district secretary work, running the camp, et cetera, preaching off every weekend, except whenever sometimes I asked not to, and sometimes Brother Mitchell would, he was my pastor, he'd say, you need to take a week off. I said, okay. I, I trusted his advice. But I preached in Louisville for Brother Gerald Vitito, my now deceased friend. Preached a lot down there. And I can remember this in my mind so vividly that Sunday. And I was preaching in an altar service. There was a young teenage boy and girl and what appeared to be a mother and dad, and they were all kind of like a little circle. Brother Smith, I got right down in the middle of them and was praying and weeping, crying. I'd go in a circle and lay hands on Brother Bill, and they began to talk in tongues, receive the Holy Ghost. Because I went on about my way preaching other weekends. Went back there for Brother Vitito's mother's funeral. We were setting off over this direction where Charlie and Andre was at. This couple come around. He stopped. He said, oh, Brother Seaman, it's good to see you. Well, I didn't recognize him. And, you know, a lot of people know me, and I don't know them. And uh, he said, oh, he said, let me tell you what you did for us. I said, okay. He said, your sermon was so convicting. He said, I had been living for God he said, I backslid. My wife and I got a divorce. I married this and now my wife. And he said, um, I got involved in drugs, crack cocaine. I got my wife addicted to it and my two kids. And he said, we were on a three-day crack binge that Sunday. He said, for some unknown reason, I got up. I jokingly said, let's go to church. But I said, God got a hold of our heart. He said, God delivered us that Sunday morning from crack to look at his wife. You'd never know she was a crack addict. He said, that was my daughter singing in a choir and my son playing the drums. That's what God can do for us. Somebody somewhere interceded. In fact, I think his mother went, went to church there and held on to the Lord. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And to my knowledge, they're still going on with the Lord. The last time I preached this a number of years ago, they were still going on with the Lord, praise God. And many of you, God has delivered and you're still going on. So let me close with this statement. I'm going to turn it to the pastor. Praise God. I'm so glad that they're here tonight. I'm so glad that the Lord has healed them and touched them and thanked the Lord. And God blessed them. And pray for your pastor every day. You know what we need to be? We need to be a Joshua and a her every day for this couple. I trust me, I know, I know what it's like to feel the effects of those prayers. People may refuse our love and reject our message, but they are defenseless against our prayers. God bless you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Stand to your feet if you would. Amen, amen. I'm going to ask those that are standing here uh, on this side, turn and face Sister Seaman, extend a hand. Those of you that are on this side, Brother Seaman's going into the office there. Stretch out your hand and let's pray for these uh, great people of God for their many years of blessing and teaching. God, I pray now, Lord, for Brother and Sister Seaman. Thank you for the word that's been delivered to us, Lord, the hope, the blessed assurance we have in you, the blessedness. And I pray, God, that you would bless them bless them in their life God bless them in their daily life I pray that health 
would be a blessing upon them. I pray against any sickness, any disease, God, let nothing come upon them. In the name of Jesus, I pray for their finances. I pray, God, even more importantly, for their family and the salvation of their family. I pray it in the name of Jesus. Come on, church, help me pray. In the name of Jesus, God, extend goodness, extend mercy all the days of their life. Let it be upon them. We ask in your glorious name, God, for all that they have given, Lord, give return to them. And all that they have blessed, pour blessing out upon them. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, God, thank you for all you're doing for us. Thank you for this day, for the children that are in the back. Bless that ministry and bless them. And keep us safe, Lord, in this house. And we again call on your name for Brother Kevin. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. So good to have you in the house of the Lord. Come join us Sunday. We're going to have a good time. Somebody say yes. Amen. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.